Welcome to Flesh and Blood Learn to Play. Flesh and Blood is a hero-centric, fantasy-themed trading card game. There are many classic fantasy classes to choose from, each with their own unique playstyle. We are going to learn to play as Ira, a vengeful ninja. Start the game with your hero and weapon and play. The object of the game is to reduce the opposing hero's life points to zero. This is your hero's intellect, or hand size. You start the game with this many cards in your hand. And at the end of each of your turns, you draw cards until the number of cards in your hand is equal to your hero's intellect. It's usually a good idea to use all the cards in your hand each turn to maximize the benefit of this redraw. Underneath your hero zone is your arsenal, where you can store a card for future use. At the end of your turn, before you draw cards, if you have any cards left in your hand and your arsenal is empty, you may put one card from your hand face down into your arsenal. You may only play cards from your arsenal. We will revisit what this means shortly. To play cards, you must work within two constraints. You can play one action per turn unless that action has go again. Ninjas are very agile, showcased by many cards with go again. In the Ira deck, you will find a number of cards that naturally have go again and a number of cards that conditionally gain go again. There are also cards that do not have go again. When you play an action that does not have go again, it will end your turn after it resolves. Cards have a resource cost that must be paid, found in the top right corner of cards in your deck, or the text box of cards with an activated ability. To gain resource points, you can pitch one or more cards from your hand when there is a cost to pay. A card's pitch value is shown by the number of socketed resource symbols. Each card in your deck also has a pitch value color strip. Blue cards pitch for three resource points, yellow cards pitch for two, and red cards pitch for one. Typically, you will be looking to pitch your blue cards to pay for your higher impact yellow and red cards. To pitch a card, place it face up into your pitch zone from your hand. At end of turn, before you draw cards, all cards in your pitch zone are put on the bottom of your deck in the order of your choice. In a game of flesh and blood, you nearly always go through your deck at least one time. So be mindful that you will be working with the cards you pitch later in the game. Now you know how to play cards, so let's look at combat. Combat is made up of one or more chain links. A chain link has four steps. The attacking hero plays an attack. The defending hero can defend with any number of cards from their hand. There is no cost to defend with cards. Simply put them onto the chain link you are defending. All defending cards are declared simultaneously during the defending window. The exception to this are defense reaction cards, which can only be played during the reaction window. The reaction window is where combat tricks are played. The attacking hero can play attack reaction cards, and the defending hero can play defense reaction cards. Compare the power of the attack against the defense value of all cards defending this chain link. If the power of the attack is greater than the total defense value, the defending hero takes damage equal to the difference. If the defending hero is dealt damage this way, the attack is considered to have hit. If the attack has go again, the attacking hero can now play another attack. The first attack of a combat chain is chain link one, the second attack is chain link two, and so on. Let's look at a combat example. It's Chris's turn. He decides to attack with Edge of Autumn. Chris pitches Head Jab, gaining three resource points. He spends one resource point to pay the cost of Edge of Autumn, and two resource points remain in his resource pool to use later this turn. Edge of Autumn becomes Chain Link 1 on the combat chain. Sarah now decides if she wants to defend the attack from Edge of Autumn. Sarah does not defend, taking one damage. At Chain Link 2, Chris plays Whirling Mist Blossom, which gets plus one power from Ira's hero effect. Whirling Mist Blossom has a powerful effect. If it hits, and it's the second or higher chain link in a row to hit, Chris will draw two cards. Sarah decides to defend with Flying Kick. Now we move to the reaction window. During the reaction window, only attack reaction and defense reaction cards can be played. Chris plays Lunging Press, giving Whirling Mist Blossom plus one power. Sarah's only option now is to play a defense reaction, which in the Ira deck is Springboard Somersault. If Sarah does not have Springboard Somersault, 
She will not be able to stop Whirling Mist Blossom from dealing one damage, and Chris will draw two cards from the hit effect. At end of turn, the combat chain closes, Edge of Autumn returns to the weapon zone, and all other cards on the combat chain are put into the graveyard. You will notice in the combat example, we refer to defense reactions as being played. Let's jump back to the arsenal. You may remember we mentioned cards can only be played from arsenal. That means you can't pitch cards from arsenal. You can't defend with cards from arsenal. You can only play cards from arsenal. Paying costs as normal. As defense reaction cards are played to the chain, you can play defense reaction cards from arsenal. And in fact, Springboard Somersault gives you a nice defensive buff for doing so. The last thing you need to know to get started playing Flesh and Blood is the first turn of the game rule. On the first turn of the game, at the end of turn, all players draw cards until the number of cards in their hand are equal to their hero's intellect. From that point onwards, you only draw cards at the end of your own turn. We hope this knowledge sees you well for your coming adventures in the world of Flesh and Blood.